Hey guys, welcome back. We recently had a new update that made quite a few changes to some of the characters. You can find that update online on the forum, but it is a little bit more fun to just talk through it and talk about some of the changes and the impacts those have made. So I thought we'd just walk on down through their update notes and talk about them. Now the biggest thing that changed, or some of the big things that changed were the hero stats especially for some of the underutilized characters. I think the biggest change is going to be near the bottom. We'll talk about that in a minute. So some of these, look at these main characters they made changes to right here. Um, these are generally underutilized characters that were meant to be, I think, more useful and more common to be used than, than they currently are. Samurai Takumi comes out of the honor portal at three star. Um, he's a you know, fairly hardy character, armored, and I think they, you know, he hasn't been used all that much. You almost never see him in dungeon raiding. Um, and so they kind of further emphasized those traits that he's known for. So increased the defense, increased health, again, making him, making him even more of a hardy character, and a little increase to his attack. Cruel King Bramble is one of my favorite characters, uh, at least one of my favorite unique kind of the special event characters. They had a major increase to his attack, which I think was sorely needed. He had a fairly low attack that was noticeable, especially for one of these uh, event characters that are more difficult to get a hold of. And they also did an increase to his health. His health was kind of noticeably low before, but helped out quite a bit by having Chief Nub Nub on his team. And Chief Nub Nub gives that 25% health boost to all goblins, so that helped out. But this will again give him a little bit more hardiness. He is armored, so that helps out as well. Going on to Sifu here, you can see, again, this is a character that isn't often used, I think for a couple reasons. One of them is that he's relatively squishy, and uh, another one being he's pretty difficult, fairly difficult to try to increase the star level. So you're not gonna get any tokens for him in the honor summons or great summons, and there haven't been any events, at least for the last four months, to give you any tokens for him, or at least any significant number. So because of that, he's not often used in the dungeon rating, but he can be a really fun character to use. He's kind of a monk type character, high attack. He's somewhat squishy, but has the has a heal for his second skill. And that heal only has a three turn cooldown. So it comes up really quick. Um, you know, can keep a lot of characters going. It's also a substantial heal. You know, even when I use him for running through the Tower of Ponage, if I put him in with a small team, he can often go through that hole, you know, rather than just being someone that takes damage, he can actually go through and help that team win that, uh, that level. So that can be really helpful, but they further increase some of his stats, a little bit of increase to his health, and then additional increase for his damage, both on the attack and on the skill. Echo, for this last one out of this group, he was incredibly squishy before, and he's an undead character, so you can pair him with Lord Zom and get that 25% increase, that passive increase in health, and he was still really squishy. So hopefully this massive increase in health will really help him out as a character and make him a little bit more viable. You know, they recently gave Echo a trait that made it so there's at least a 50% chance that you can avoid losing energy from Bovis Eldoro's Stampede attack and then other attacks that can reduce energy. And so that made him much more useful, but he was still super squishy. And hopefully we can get him to the point now where he's a little bit more survivable. Um, he's another character that's really useful as well when you're going through the Tower of Ponage and you've used, say, your main team uh, and you want to replenish some of their energy, you can just swap him in and do that... Uh, you know, energized to give everybody on the team two energy and then swap him back out afterwards. So hopefully he'll become more useful. Maybe we can keep him in some of the teams a little longer, but certainly this increase in health will go a long way to, to help that out. So the next section are for these two characters that I think a lot of people have had frustrations with for quite a while. Balog was a special character. He had special events a little while back two that were fairly close to each other. I know I was able to get him up to a five-star level and was very excited. That was my first five-star character. But he is slow and a tank. His first skill wasn't super useful, and that really meant that he wasn't a particularly useful character for me. So he sat on the bench for most of the time. 
but they've made some big changes to him and the biggest one probably is taking away the slow status or the slow trait so now he'll be a regular speed character he does have a silence attack as his very first one and it works kind of like stampede but you only have a guaranteed uh, silence on the targeted character and then you have a chance to silence the other characters uh, so the other enemies that you're attacking so you get some benefit from that they also gave him increases looks like basically across the board in his stats as well along with a major increase to attack that was another thing I'd noticed when using him to attack in the Tower of Ponage usually he was just a damage absorbing character but if he went through the round and was still alive and tried to attack someone just incredibly low attack so um, nice to see those changes for Balog. Let me see my phone. Go back in, press play. Ignis the Mad as well, he's one that I think hasn't been used a whole lot and often takes a lot of criticism. He comes out of the Honor Portal as a three-star character, should be pretty powerful, but he's really a setup character. He can do a lot of damage after you set up with that first, uh, first attack. That firewall that he puts up doesn't do a whole lot of damage at first, but can, um, can inflict burn if you've got melee units going across it, and you can increase damage uh, because of that as well but he's pretty squishy, he can be taken out pretty easily, and there's not a whole lot of time to build up when you're doing things like dungeon raiding. You need, you know, lots of attack right away or disabling, um, you know, abilities that are going to make it hard for the other team to come back and do a whole lot of damage. So I think because of that, they made him a lot less squishy. They did a massive increase to his health. You know, they want to make him a better character that's going to get more use, partly because he's one of the characters that comes out at three star. Those characters that are more difficult to get a hold of, more difficult to increase the star level, they want those to be uh, more sought after and, and used characters. So also major increases to attack, defense, and skill. So across the board, uh, stat increases for Ignis. And it'll be interesting to see how much more useful he is now. That first ability isn't super useful on its own, but potentially with much higher stats, um, that might help compensate. All right, going on, we've got slow changes, and those affect Femus, so we'll just talk about them together. I think they noticed that a lot of slow characters weren't being utilized for a lot of the game, specifically probably PvP. Doing dungeon raiding, it's incredibly hard to bring in uh, slow characters, especially on your defense team, because they're so easy to deal with yeah, from the offensive side. A lot of times, you know, if you use Bovis Eldoro, uh, you can, you know, knock everybody's energy back, so they're not going to use any skills that whole first turn. You could use Igorok and freeze everybody. And you've got some different options. Potentially now you could use Balog, now that he's a normal speed, and silence any of them. So nobody that, you know, none of the slow characters are going to be using their skills, besides maybe uh, Stonefist with the Impervious. So, and, and even him, he'd be susceptible to, uh, to Bovis Eldoro. So... You know, all the slow characters, they've got a significant disadvantage that way. There are no current fast characters that have the same kind of uh, debilitating effects. So because of that, I think they wanted to give a nice buff, a nice boost, like long-term, not just an event boost, but to these slow characters. So now any hero that's slow gets this 25% bonus to their attack and to their health. Now, Femus already had a massive amount of health. I believe he had the highest health out of any character in the game. So possibly because they were going to add on and they'd already kind of compensated for that with Femus anyway, it looks like they removed a little bit of his health. But they say he actually has more health than before because of this slow change, um, because of this, this boost that they're giving slow characters. Now I'm interested because two of the slow characters, two of my favorites, Nub Nub and Lord Zom, already have 25% health buffs. Uh, not because of their because they're slow, but just uh, because of passive bonuses that they have that extend out to other team members. So now they're going to have even more because they're slow and they have those buff. They're going to really have huge health pools and additional attack, which which will be really nice for those characters.
a uh, small flying change for any flying characters, especially Torchy we're talking about here. You know, Torchy's got a very small health pool, I think the smallest of any of the characters, but he'll get a further reduction in damage from melee attacks uh, on their second ascension for any flying characters. And again, we're talking about, uh, uh, you know, Torchy. I'm trying to think of other flying characters we've got in there right now. I'd have to look back at them. But basically this will help the flying characters, I think, in general, have been relatively squishy characters. Uh, many times, you know, Torchy, for example, has a dodge built in as a passive, but he'll also then get a reduction from melee damage down to 50%. So it'll help extend his health pool at least a little further. So this is what I would say is the biggest change, maybe the most exciting change right in this section. And it's starting with Eagle Rock. So Eagle Rock was already one of the strongest characters in the game. Uh, so powerful they had to capitalize his entire name. They're just really, really powerful character. So they've made him even more powerful and they're starting with him for this theme going forward where they're gonna have what sounds like something like a legendary team or a legendary character that's like a team lead that has even stronger passive abilities that extend out. We've already seen something like this with like Nub Nub. Um, you see it with Cruel King Bramble. You know, they have passives that extend out to the other team members. Uh, Pontifex as well. I believe, so Nub Nub I don't, isn't legendary, but I believe Bramble, Pontifex, Igo Rock, and Lord Zom are, and all of them have these strong passives that extend out. I think that they're going to continue in that vein and maybe even emphasize in provide greater bonuses for those team leaders. Uh, so they'll just be particularly strong and probably rare and difficult to get characters, maybe event only with only a few times coming up in different, uh, in either the heroic summons or down to the VIP summons. So that's that's what we can see going forward. The big change for Eagle Rock, the main one was the Shatter team. So they've switched it up so any water allies, obviously on, on his team, if there are frozen enemies, they do time and a half damage to all those frozen enemies. So it works in a similar way to the way that Arctic Rush used to work with a times three multiplier is what it used to have. Um, and you know, you do a lot of damage, but it was hard to actually use that because you'd have to have somebody else do the freezing. Since the freeze was only a lasting one turn, unless there was a crit, uh, then Igor Rock didn't usually get to have benefit from his own inflicted freeze. So now any water allies are gonna get damage bonuses due to the freeze that Igle Rock or anyone else inflicts. So a nice big bonus there and looking forward to more to come in that in that direction. I think it'll be exciting for them to continue to build on this legendary character kind of team lead concept. And then uh, Reflecting Shield, his last skill for Igle Rock is now Reflecting Taunt, which makes some sense for the character anyway, but does continue to make him even more powerful than he was before. So now becomes a taunt, you have to attack him, and you're going to take more damage. So I think that's, that's another strong boost for an already really strong character. They had a small energy reduction for Selwyn's Chilling Blast. It would have been great to see this for Northern Gale. That's got a 9 turn cooldown right now. It's, uh, you know, the same type of skill as Polar Pounding, but without doing as much damage. And so... Um, We'd like to see some of those going forward as well. That's it for now. Um, nice to talk through these things. And let me know what you think. And we'll talk to everyone soon. Thanks again for watching. If you like this, then you're going to love what we have coming out next. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more mobile gaming videos. Or check out the rest of the channel for more tips and tricks. If you don't have this game yet, feel free to download it from the sponsored link in the video description below. These downloads help to support the channel and help us to continue to put out more great videos. Thanks again for all your support, and come back soon as we continue our quest, seeking every possible advantage.